All right. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tammy Samaripa, and I am the department chair for nursing and allied health. So welcome, welcome to our live, our live uh, chat. And so hopefully we'll have lots of questions that we can help you answer. Uh, I do want to extend a warm welcome to all of you from uh, the Department of Nursing and Allied Health faculty and staff. Uh, welcome to the presentation. I also want to uh, say thank you to all of our healthcare providers, our law enforcement, firefighter, EMTs, paramedics that are working so hard uh, to care for us through the COVID-19 pandemic. So this week, we celebrate our emergency medical services provider through EMS week. Uh, last week, we celebrated Nurses Week, and uh, last month, we celebrated Lab Professional Week. Uh, in October, uh, we will celebrate Massage Therapist Week. So a whole lot of celebration for professionals who are more than deserving of that recognition. And so with this week being EMS week, I'd like to read you a quick poem dedicated to our EMS professionals titled, Hear Me America, I Am the EMT. And it says, Hear Me America, I Am the EMT. I see your people as you never see them. Mighty and small, they are beggars before me, their faces all frightened, beseeching, bewildered, and hopeful of help from one more frightened than any. I see your pit pitiful nakedness, your limbness twisted, their bodies tattered, their blood on the asphalt, their children crying. They trust me to help them, they know I will help them. I see their illness too in your big cities, their fevers I feel as you dream at midnight in little towns. They call me to whose hearts are aching and whose dreams are shattered and they touch me with their weariness. Sometimes they seek me who are simply alone and who cannot bear the night, and I am their servant too. Fallen from tractors and fields, I find them, and in stilled cars, they are silent and pale on cold rainy nights. The crunching of glass under black heavy boots tells me they're coming. I fold them in blankets. My beacons light up your streets as their babies are born. My wail carries down your boulevard past your shiny glass walls. Your stockyards and quiet farms and your people look up from their work as I go by. Time is metered in heartbeats. I fight the battles to keep them alive. I cover their eyes when they breathe no more. My partner is a hero, but no one knows his name. And that's from Author Unknown. And uh, so again, happy EMS week to all of our EMS professionals. Um, so thankful for what you do. Uh, I do have one other departmental support team member here with me today, Ms. Sarah Nunez, who will be assisting me with some of the questions that are coming in and that you have at the end. And so we'll get those questions answered for you. And so within the Department of Nursing and Allied Health, we have the following programs. We have our licensed vocational nurse. We have our associate degree nurse. We have our EMT, our paramedic, our medical lab technology, histology, phlebotomy, and our new program hopefully coming up in the fall for, uh, for credit is massage therapy. And so um, with the, there's, Typically questions as to what's the difference between the licensed vocational nurse and the associate degree nurse. Um, obviously, time in the classroom is a little different. Our LVN program is about a year long, whereas our associate degree nurse is a two year program. And so um, the other is responsibilities in the healthcare profession as to what they do and the different skills that they perform. Um, the EMT paramedic, the EMT is much shorter. However, the paramedic is a little bit longer. Both of them work in the emergency medical services area. Uh, and so um, medical lab, that's gonna be the profession that you do in the lab where you're looking at fluids. Histology is the profession that you're looking at studying of tissue. Phlebotomy is drawing blood and massage therapy is performing massages on people. So uh, those are the programs we offer. Most of our programs are short uh, and then, sorry, some of our, our programs vary from short to about two years. And short, I mean by one semester. So our programs go anywhere from one semester to one year. Um, they all lead to some form of certification or licensure that you can use in the workforce. 
And many of our programs um, aren't just state approved, they are also nationally accredited, which is really important for you as a student so that you know we have met a national standard uh, for not only our curriculum, but for our guidelines. And so, um, so as a student and, and the recipient of the education, that's important for you to know that many of our programs are nationally accredited. Um, much of our program information, so each program has specific entry requirements. Uh, they also have um, prerequisite information. So some of our programs have courses that are required that you have to take before you can even start the program. And then some of our courses have no prerequisite courses. It's just um, things that need to be done, such as immunization, CPR, background, drug screen. So depending on what program you're interested in will determine as to whether um, what you need to do in order to get in. So I was gonna show you where to find that information real quick on uh, the website. And so I'm gonna share the screen and show you where that's at. And so essentially you're gonna be going to the CTC home Okay, so we should all be able to see the CTC homepage. And here to students, you'll come down to Sammy, uh, you're I still can't see the content. Just give us a second. There we go. Now it's on. Okay, so let me go back one screen. Okay, so everybody should see the CTC homepage there. Does everybody, do you see that? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go to students and then we'll go to instructional departments. And so then what's nice about the CTC a page is that it has them all listed out uh, by program here. And so as we scroll down, what you'll see is here is emergency medical technologies page. Here is histologies page. A little bit further down, we have our medical lab page. And then here you see nursing. And so all of our programs, and we'll go ahead and click on nursing since we're there. All of our programs have a page. And then each program will have all the information. You'll find information here on the right side of your screen. And um, they also contain updates. So here is some really good information. If you are a nursing candidate coming in for the fall, there's some information about meetings that you have that are upcoming. Um, if you are a uh, prospective student, you just have to kind of scroll down. You'll see here if you have questions about your application. So if you're a nursing student that has applied already to the program and you're wondering about your application status, there's good information here. You need to email the DONA webpage. Um, if you are wanting to come into the program, we start with information here that's important for you to know and so you can read through this. And then down here at the bottom is where you're gonna find your information packets and course descriptions. And so what you'll see here is here's the associate degree. Here's our, our articulation. So if you are an LVN or a paramedic, we also have a program that'll bridge you over to the RN program. And so that's good for you to know because you can take what you already have and advance that. And so that's a nice option that uh, we have here at the college for you. And then we have the vocational. <laughs> so with our nursing programs, uh, the nursing, the associate degree nurse and the vocational nurse, 
they take in two classes a year. And so um, there's lots of opportunity to once you finish those prerequisites, hopefully we can get you in uh, to the nursing program and get you started. And then down here is where you'll find that information pack I was talking about. And each one of these information packs will walk you through the admissions process step by step. And so uh, if we if we go back to the list of programs, um, I can show you one more. Let's let's look at the emergency medical technology. And so again, there's going to be um, there's going to be pages there with updates and those type things. And so uh, recently, our emergency medical technology program, which you saw listed earlier, has updated its name to paramedicine. And so you'll see at the top where it says paramedicine, and on the previous screen it said emergency medical technology. So they're in transition of a name change. Uh, and so they will be paramedicine and under paramedicine, we will have EMT and paramedic. And so paramedicine will be the name that you'll start seeing pretty frequently now for emergency medical services. And so, um, so don't get confused, all the same program, it's just they're in the middle of a name change. And so some of the areas you'll see that change. Uh, but again, just like the nursing page, if you scroll down, uh, you will Their program um, information is there to the right, but then you will start to see their programs of study. You'll start to see the overview. And their information packet was um, up here on the right side of the screen. It says right at the top there, it says information packet. And so all of our programs will have an information packet to assist you with um, understanding what the requirements are of the program. And so that is the nursing and uh, I'm sorry, the allied health nursing and allied health page that you can find all of that information um, there. So now I'm gonna go back to me. So is, there, is everybody back to my screen where you can see me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and so if you're interested in any one of our programs, your first step to coming in any of our programs is going to be um, to apply to Central Texas College. So that's your absolute first step in um, reaching your goal of any type of healthcare profession out of our college is going to be the first step is applying to the college. Um, and then your next step would be is to make sure you go to the program page that you're interested in and just follow the packet. We have a wonderful set of directors for every program and they keep those packets um, updated as well as our support clerical staff keep it updated. And so, um, if you ever have any questions about our program, that's where you should go is uh, to the website. We keep it updated so that you can get that information, especially through COVID. We've had a lot of um, things we've had to do and uh, accommodate because of the changes that we've experienced here at the college. And so if, if you would have asked me a year ago, how could we transform hands-on programs to online format uh, how can we facilitate the completion of students that are doing hands-on programs in a matter of days? I would say, I don't know that it was possible, but um, it was possible. Uh, the faculty in this department, uh, our support team, many departments here at CTC made it happen. And so um, very thankful for the fact that, that everybody put in an effort and, and was able to do that to support our students. And so, in the spring, uh, our cohorts that were in the spring semester when COVID-19 kind of all came and transpired, uh, we, we had to move much of the material uh, last minute over to uh, online platforms. And uh, mainly it was class content curriculum, the cognitive side of the program. And so every one of our programs here in DONA 
have three sides to them. They have the cognitive, they have the psychomotor, and then um, of course we have the affective. Um, there's also a clinical component that comes with that psychomotor area. And so cognitive just means the, the learning academic class side of it. And so that part's the part we put online. Uh, then we have the psychomotor, which comes with the clinical lab skills. And so the way we've been overcoming that for spring has been uh, working very close with our college administration for uh, approvals and in, in following those COVID-19 guidelines and directives from the CDC uh, and just kind of spacing out our students over longer periods of time to accomplish that. And so uh, many of our spring students are still in progress working through those lab skills uh, and also the clinical skills. A lot of the sites, uh, clinical and field affiliates, uh, we could not perform clinicals during the COVID-19 and what we're still experiencing. Some are now opening. Um, however, we've had to um, kind of hold on those and we're slowly starting to be able to get back to those. And so uh, we are working very close with our clinical and field affiliates to make sure that that happens and that that is successful. Uh, moving forward uh, for summer, what we're looking at is following the same format it's working. We've been able to accomplish getting specific groups successfully through doing it paced out and slow. Um, and so we were able to finish up one group at the beginning of May. And now we are working on our next group, which is the licensed vocational group. June will be uh, working with the EMS group. And in July, we'll be finishing up the ADN group, all stemming from coming out of the spring. And so in the summer, we do plan to admit into certain programs, not all programs, but some of the programs will open up for admission for the summer so that we then can uh, start working with those students and getting them started through their professions. Um, and so some of those programs will open up for summer. And then as we move into the fall semester, that will really depend on how we are doing with COVID-19 directives and guidelines, obviously coming from CDC, our government officials, and then um, importantly from our administrators here at Central Texas College who have been uh, very supportive with trying to get our students uh, successfully completed, which I'm very thankful for. And so, uh, so for fall, we just have to kind of wait and see, but the plan right now is uh, for all the programs to be um, offered and uh, up and running and hopefully we can um, get everybody in that's been wanting to come in and be successful starting in the fall. Uh, but if for some reason we're still operating under the same guidelines, uh, then the plan would be to admit with the cognitive side being online and working through the lab skills and clinicals as we're able to. So, so a very big department, lots of responsibility, lots of moving parts are happening here in Department of Nursing and Allied Health. I do, I do wanna share that uh, in the fall of 2020, our department name will change. We will no longer be the Nursing and Allied Health Department. We will be Department of Health Sciences. Uh, we did that uh, primarily because we are such a large department and all of our programs um, are included. And so we wanted to make sure we had a name that was all inclusive, uh, that included our lab sciences and all of our other health professionals. And so, um, so we're excited about the fact that in the fall, our name will change to Department of Health Sciences. So uh, if you're a prospective student, and you are looking at coming into one of our programs in the fall, you will be one of the first to be a part of our new name of Department of Health Sciences. So we look forward to having you. Um, and so uh, again, our success here in our department, uh, which all of our programs are very successful, pass rates are, are excellent. And um, you know, that, that success doesn't come just from amazing faculty and staff. Uh, the support we receive from our community. So um, our community is very supportive. Our clinical field affiliates are very supportive. Our CTC leadership, the CTC foundation, our CTC family, 
Um, we have a big family here at CTC, business services, financial aid, IT, bookstore, student services, HR, marketing, uh, all our other departments, student life, facilities management, everybody pitches in to help us with our success. And uh, there's so many others that I, I could name, but that's that's not probably what you want to hear. But um, we, we attribute our success to so many of our departments here at CTC. Our CT fam CTC family has been wonderful. Uh, and they help us support you, our perspective, and our current students and our previous students. Uh, they're a big part of our success. And so, um, so if any of them are out there listening, thank you for what you do behind the scenes to make us successful. And so um, we look forward to assisting you now and in the future for whatever your needs might be. Uh, we are gonna open the floor for some questions. And uh, so if you have specific questions, we certainly can help you answer those. And, um, Again, we do have the CTC website that we do keep updated that we can we can guide you through as well. So, um, open for questions. I do have one question. Sorry, I'm Deidre. Um, I am a I'm actually going to the ADN program in fall, and I need to get a basis of. How I'm going to present child care. I, I, I was wondering if you guys have a certain schedule. If COVID-19 is over with, what time are we going to be there and when do we leave because of the fact that I have kids and I need to, you know, get that planned out. Okay, Sarah, do you want to answer that or you want me to, to tap in and do that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to raise my hand. <laughs> um. We suggest that you have Monday through Thursday blocked out between eight and five to make sure you have childcare during that time. You will be attending class anytime between eight and five, but you have to remember it's a full schedule and a full load. So we ask that you have that blocked out so you can have childcare between eight and five, Monday through Thursday. Just if you're not in class, know that you'll be studying and um, or doing clinicals. So it's safe to say if you have eight to five blocked out with child care, you won't be overwhelmed and won't be scrambling to try and find child care. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Alishba. I have a question to ask you as well. I'm an LVN and I wanted to get into the articul I'm sorry, articulating program. And I wanted to know the deadlines because I know you guys are not offering the skilled nursing um class this fall and you guys are offering in spring and i wanted to make sure that i can actually get in a fall of 2021 and i can't find on the website like the like the deadlines for all my classes that needs to be done and i've already submitted my application but the only class that's holding me back is the skilled nursing to get into the program Thank you for your question. Um, skilled nursing courses are only offered right now in the spring. Please um, be aware you, that, how long have you had your license right now? Um, for a year now. Okay, so you need to have that one year experience unless you've already graduated from our LVN program. We waive that one year experience. Um, nursing skills, you can only register for that in the spring and you'll need to make sure you have um, your nursing license as proof so we can register you for that class. And then um, you'll still need to be ranked and be considered for that fall 2021 cohort. You can see the deadlines on the CTC website. And it's the same deadlines for both ADN, articulating, and VN. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I have Laura Gower. Um, I'm gonna unmute you so you can ask your question. Laura, go ahead and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, so um, I've actually seen the application guideline online for spring 2021, 20, uh, but I actually haven't seen the fall one. So I sort of have the same question as the previous applicant. Um, but also another question, um, when it has the electives for humanities, 
how can you tell which electives qualify for that uh, humanities elective for the ADN prerequisites? The prerequisites for ADN you can see on um, WebAdvisor. If you look on your degree plan, it'll show you a list of the arts and humanities courses. Are you on the pre-nursing degree plan now? Uh, no, I'm a regular student. I just took uh, introduction to ethics, which I assume qualifies, but. Okay, so one of the wonderful things about WebAdvisor is you can do a what if. So you can go ahead and load in the pre-nursing degree plan and look at the arts and humanities courses that qualify for the degree. And Very if you good. need you. further assistance, just let me know. Uh, it would be great if I could speak to somebody. I also have a question about a prior course that I took as part of my first degree program. I have a, a BSN in biomedical science from Texas A&M from 30 years ago, though. I have a question about a, a prerequisite English, which I took then. Is there Your English will still be to? good. The only okay. limits that we have on um, courses are for your sciences courses. Those are good for five years. Yeah, I, I so we're sciences. talking about, yeah. So the AMP one, AMP two, and microbi are good for five years. And so yeah. is you the pharmacology. Since you mentioned those two, those two are the last two courses I need for prerequisites, uh, microbiology and AMP two. Uh -huh. Currently, we're still planning to offer them in the fall? Um, yes, those two courses are planning to offer in the fall. AMP2 is a co-requisite, but we strongly encourage you to take that course and you'll, um, depending on your grades, you'll get extra points because for the ranking process. Very good. Uh, very good. So I'll jump on it on June 1st. Thank you. Uh -huh. I just needed to backtrack on the courses for ADN. I know somebody asked about childcare. Um, the ADN clinicals are Monday and Tuesday and they're 12 hour shifts. So you'll need to make um, changes or make um, adjustments accordingly, depending on where you fall in your clinicals. Um, you'll have a couple of 12 hour shifts on Monday and Tuesday. Any other questions? Don't see any. Uh, oh, hi. Can I have a question? Yes, Lorena Hassel. Let me see where you're at. And so does Crystal. Let me get you. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, ask your question. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Lorena Hatfield. I'm working as a CNA in Bell's County wide at Mad Surge, and I'm interested in your program, but ADN, I already took test, I but didn't pass the math test. How can I get into the program? So you're still needing to be TSI complete based on math? Yes, yes. Okay, you can re, you have two choices. You can retake your math TSI when we open up, we can do a temporary waiver, but, um, or you can take the developmental courses, it's up to you. How can I enroll, how can I enroll with that developmental? So you'll need to talk to a academic advisor and they'll tell you what courses you need to enroll in to become TSI complete on your math. Um, is the, is the college open for? Yes, uh, the right college now? is open. College is open and um, you, can, you can go on the CTC website and uh, look up the uh, advisors and they will be able to just call them or email them. Their information is there and that way you can reach out to them. Uh, they, they will get back with you. They, we are open, yes. Let me just clarify that we're not open for you to walk in. We are working remotely, so you must email or use the website. We the, the doors are closed because we're not there. We are working remotely, but we will be able to help you through email or, or via the website. And there's a chat feature on the academic advising website, which was a much quicker response time. 
that would probably uh, be more beneficial for you to use. Okay, so don't walk into the building because you won't be able to. So email them and use the website to uh, to get your questions answered. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, I'm Alicia, I have one more question to ask you. Um, I know this college is not open right now, but when it does, that's when I'll be able to take my HESI test, right? Yes, when the testing center opens. Currently, we have adjusted for spring 2021 guidelines um, to August 17th, but please remember that the situation is fluid and if things change and we need to change, make adjustments to the due date, we will and we'll communicate that on the nursing website and then we'll just make adjustments as it goes. Okay, um, one more quick question. So the deadline for fall 2021 is also on the CTC website, right? For fall, yes it is. Okay, all right, because I'm just having a hard time finding the deadlines for 2021. Yes, there should be the fall 2021. You can always email Dona and we'll email you back with the deadlines. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I do have some uh, on Facebook. I do have some comments um, here that I thought were kind of important. Somebody asked if the clinical times will continue into the fall for the first semester and Veronica King answered. Uh, the ADN clinicals are currently either Monday or Tuesday, 12 hours. And then for the ADN program, I know that we have, oh wait, I thought she, yeah, she said that that would be the standard for fall 2020. And then I have the, another question that says for the ADN program, I know that we have new uniforms this year. I wanted to try to make my own. Do we have to buy the specific ones or can we just match the color and get the CTC insignia from last year's uniform? Okay, so I can I can speak on that. Um, and so the the uniforms will be out of the bookstore and the patch and the, the things that were used last year will no longer be uh, able to use for the new uniforms. The new uniforms will have a specific uh, logo on the sleeve and it will not be a patch. And so um, we right now are having all students get it from the bookstore. And um, that would be something that would have to be um, discussed further uh, with the department in reference to if there's anything outside of not getting it from the bookstore, that's something that would have to go through the department. So right now it is gonna be at the bookstore uh, so that all the colors are, are the same and the logos are the same uh, and it is the approved logo for Central Texas College. All right, they just click into my head. It's Alicia again. Okay, so you said that if I had graduated from CTC, then you guys will waive like the one year experience that I need to get into the um, program. But I didn't graduate from CTC. I graduated from Georgia. I just moved to Texas. And how will that work? So if you are coming in from another school and where you got your LVN license, you will need to um, have at least one year experience. Okay, all right. I know Crystal had a question. So the question was, what's the best way to prepare for the HESI? So there's two resources we have through CTC. If you're a CTC student, we have the Learning Resource Center, which has set up um, study guides through course sites, which is the free version of Blackboard. So if you're familiar with Blackboard, um, you can get set up in course sites. And that's through the Learning Resource Center. It, you can always email Dona to um, request access to that. The other way is through the CTC library, through the databases. There is a um, database source called Learning Express. If you use the keyword HESI, it'll bring up sample HESI practice questions and study guides. 
And you can also get on Amazon and look for HESI um, practice guides and study guides. And there was a question from Dana. I have a question since the ADA, ADN program has been strictly full-time before COVID-19 and now we have moved to online classes with the slower pace programs. Is there any chance that the ADN program will become part-time program for those who a full-time job with using online slower paced programs as a solution. Currently, we only have a full-time ADN program. We do not have any part-time programs. Any other questions? Crystal? Uh, am I unmuted? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I missed the first part of the um, session. I had a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, I'm trying to get into the, the Alvian program. Does this cover that as well? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Um, so I think uh, one question I had was about the HESI, but you guys just covered that. And um, the other question, um, oh, yeah. For for the VN program for um, spring of 2021, I believe. Um, what is your schedule like for that as far as clinicals and class times? For which program? I'm sorry. Um, LVN. Um, the LVN will be Monday through Thursday too for day program. Okay. So will it be basically the same time for? Yeah, as the ADN. Okay, great. That was the only okay. um, There's some questions on Facebook that they that I need to answer. Um, how many students do you accept in the ADN program each cycle? Well, it varies from semester to semester, um, and it's dependent on clinical sites, um, how many students um, apply, and how many instructors we have. So, I can give a phone number. Natalie Thompson asked when we'll be able to start HESI testing. Um, we still don't know yet. We're hoping maybe in July, but nothing is firm. And no, it's the same. Natalie also asked if there's a separate L, um, application for the LVN evening program. So the LVN evening program is only offered in the fall. It's the same application that you would do for a regular um, vocational nursing program. You just need to indicate that you are interested in the nights and weekends program. Are there any other questions that I missed? I don't see any more questions that answer. Uh, I think we're, unless anybody else has any questions, please type them in or let us know. Um, I hope that if not, that at least everybody feels like they have, you know, gotten your questions answered, you have a better idea what to expect uh, for the summer and also for the fall. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is we're waiting to see what happens, but I hope that you guys can kind of bear with us and understand that, yes, we're here to help you um, however we can. So can you describe how ranking is done, for example, on what is based? Okay, so ranking is a point-based system. We do it based on GPA. Um, your HESI score and whether you've completed um, your AMP one with your AMP two. So if you complete, which is a co-rec. So if you complete AMP two, depending on your grade, like an A, you would get three points, a B, you get two points. It, when you take your pharmacology, 
if you, the first time you take it, you get an A, you get extra points. Um, be sure to make sure you have the 2.8 GPA. We had a lot of students who thought that they even qualified for the program, but if you don't have a 2.8 or higher GPA on your sciences, which is your AMP1, AMP2, and microbiology, you won't qualify for the program. Um, if your overall score on your HESI is 90 or above, you'll max out on points there. Um, and I think I covered it all. Any other questions? Um, Maritza said, hello everyone. I, I have a following question. I'm looking for transferring to CTC for spring 2021 ADN nursing program. I'm currently located in California and would like to know how to access taking the HESI as well as is August 17th the only date for taking the HESI? Now the August 17th is the deadline, so you need to have it taken by August 17th. You can take um, the HESI H2 exam at any testing center that offers a HESI H2. It just needs to have all the components, which is um, the vocabulary, the reading comprehension, the anatomy and physiology, and the math portion. And then the testing center would need to submit it to us, your test scores. We need it directly from the testing center where you took the test. Any other questions? I don't see any more. We're still here. If you have questions, we're still available for a little bit. Uh, you can either raise your hand if you're online, and I think Laura's has, has her answer. Other than that, I want to say thank you very much for everybody that has been here online. Um, Okay, uh, I do have one more question. Do you know of any other testing centers around? I do not. You'd probably best bet is to check um, the Elsevier website to see what testing centers are in whatever area you are. Um, another question, will ADN classes be face-to-face -face in the fall? Currently, we plan on um, some classes being face-to-face, -face, but depending on how things go the next couple of months, um, there may be changes. I have another one here. It says, since the testing center is closed, are we allowed to take the test elsewhere? And basically, the answer is yes, correct? Yes, they can take the test elsewhere um will it be waived to campus is still close in august we're still waiting we'll know more come august so just um keep checking the HESI, the um, nursing website and we'll let you know any other questions that weren't answered i see crystal has her hand up uh, Chris, Crystal, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? I see you got your hand up patiently waiting. Thank you. Go ahead. If the testing center happens to not be open um, by the time uh, the deadline for the HESI test. Um, if some people are able to find a facility to take the test while others are not, how will the uh, grading or the point system be factored in for that? Well, this semester we did not have, um, the HESI was waived for ranking. And what we did is we just excluded the HESI altogether and did ranking with the other components, which is your pharmacology, getting more points, um, your GPA and um, taking that AMP too. So we just totally excluded the HESI from the ranking process. Yeah, and what, what we'll do, Crystal, is as we get closer to that time frame, the uh, nursing program director will relook at uh, the situation and uh, determine if another extension is needed or um, if the admissions and standards committee needs to get together and make new decisions as to how 
uh, that entrance process will be. Um, all of that will be determined in-house and you will get that information through our website. They will post an announcement as to what will happen at that point. Um, and so they, they are watching it very close. Um, we just have to keep in standards and guidelines of what our administration is, is having us do and when we can get back and what can open. And so um, we will keep you posted, but those decisions are, are being made as things are just kind of evolving. And so um, to predict it, we're not able to, but we are doing our best to keep you uh, informed on the website. Our nursing program director is very active with keeping uh, notes up on that website. So. Um, just stay posted, stay tuned, and hopefully we'll have more information for you as time progresses and more things either open or close for us. Okay, Jennifer asked a question about um, ADN students and registering for fall. If you're currently in a program, registration doesn't even start for fall for CTC until after June 1st. We'll be pushing out um, directions from, for you guys to email Ms. Tasha Butcher to register for fall um, for any ADN student wishing to register for fall. So just check your student email with directions. Mm -hmm. Deidre had a question. Deidre, you've been muted. Hello? Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, with the ADN program, I know this probably isn't the site. I should probably just wait till the 21st for orientation, but I know that there's a lot of supplies that we have to buy. Is there a specific list that I can find online, like the stethoscope, the certain shoes, stuff like that? Or will that information be provided on the 21st? Yes that information will be provided to you in orientation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they will have they will have a comprehensive list for you, Deidre, that will have not only what you need, but where you can get it. We are trying to facilitate uh, our bookstore having the majority of the things that are on that list for you, as well as the information about your lab kit, which also has, uh, has all the equipment in just one kit. But uh, some of the other things like stethoscope and pen lights and uniforms and clipboards and those type things, we're trying to facilitate all that through the bookstore uh, to our sister students that are using financial aid and uh, other uh, veteran assistance and those type things. And so um, we will have more information for you uh, at the orientation so that you can get that list and know exactly where to get it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, with, the, oh, sorry. with the bookstore being closed right now, how am I supposed to access that information, like get all that, um, the, the items, sorry. So on that, uh, the information that we provide you at the orientation, we will also tell you how to reach to the bookstore. They are moving everything to where you can order online. And so, um, so they will have an option for you as to how to facilitate you getting those items even though the door is closed, they are open. It's just going to be virtual. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Okay, Natalie Thompson had some questions. Her prereqs are complete this summer for the LVM program, but she's requesting for the evening and weekends program. So that program is only offered in the fall. And if your prerequisites will be complete, we've already made selections for fall of this year. So the next time you would be considered is fall 2021. Um, if you've received your request for the next LVN evening courses, when you put in your application, you can look in the progress and I'll say in progress. Once we've processed your application, it will say ended and we'll reach out with you to your student email. So be sure to check your student email and we'll be sending you notifications. questions um sorry i have a question so you said there's a weekend and the night uh, program right is is it only for the adian program or the articulating program as well it's only for the vocational nursing program we don't have an evening and weekends program for the adian at all okay all right thank you 
Anybody else? Ooh, somebody being considered as a nursing student, is that considered as full-time? If not, can we add a class to be full-time? Yes, um, you can add classes to be full-time. If you look at the degree plan, you can see how many courses. Um, sometimes it ranges be about 11 credit hours. So if you need to, for financial aid or whatever, you can add in extra classes to go ahead and get that full-time status. Um, I applied to the histology program. Will, when will I be notified if I am accepted? Um, and so those those notifications, I am not sure that they've went out already, but you will be notified by um, the support staff that is uh, associated with that program. Her name is Ms. Barbie Robbins. She will be uh, meeting with her directors and they will be issuing out those acceptances. And so you can always reach out to uh, Ms. Barbie Robbins. If you go to the histology website, you'll see her email. And you can uh, reach out to her and she can give you the specifics uh, based on what she has submitted for you. So um, I encourage you to reach out to Ms. Robbins and she can get you an answer based on where your application is at. So Daryl Woods asked, how do I start? How start in the fall? How do we go about re registering for classes? So if you're already accepted into the program, any LVN or RNSG course we need to register you for. So you will, um, we'll give you instructions on how to get registered for those classes. You can't, as a CTC student, just um, register for those classes and we'll cover that in orientation. We have another question. I have completed my prerequisites for the ADN program, but would like to take summer classes. Would it be helpful to take classes such as humanities, fine art selection, or psychology 2314? Or would it be best to just wait and take those for the fall and spring semester? Or spring semester? We highly encourage you to take your co-requisites. That way it's a lighter load because the program is pretty intense. So if you can take those co-requisites ahead of time, please do. So usually um, most ADN students take those co-requisites, which is the psychology, the lifespan, growth and development, your arts and humanities, your AMP2, that'll help you be more successful when you are in the program. Any other questions that anybody might have? I'm trying to see if I'm missing anybody. Um, anybody else online? No? Because if not, then we're going to end on this note. I think this has been a very successful um, opportunity for everybody to participate. Thank you very much. For everyone, you have had amazing questions, and I think it has been a really productive uh, session. If you have any questions again, um, please contact the soon to be Department of Social of uh, Health Sciences. Yeah. <laughs> and can we uh, can we just say real quick what the email is so that everybody can have it available, please? Yes, we can. So the, the email right now to reach out to our dep department is dona at ctcd.edu, and that stands for Department of Nursing and Allied Health. So it's D-O-N-A-H, dona at ctcd.edu, and that dona stands for Department of Nursing and Allied Health. 
I am getting a lot of people here that are saying thank you for doing this live video. It was very helpful. I'm hoping that everybody thinks so. And if you have any questions, please contact the department, especially if you have anything that's more specific to your situation. Uh, thank you for watching us live. And I'm sure we'll be, to, please tune in later. Um, tomorrow at 10, we'll also be having our next session. And that one uh, is going to be our next CTC Live. Our next CTC Live is actually going to be um, for industrial technology. If anybody, if you know of anybody who might be interested in industrial technology or has any questions about it, uh, please have them contact us. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you again tomorrow for our next CTC Live. Bye, everybody. We look forward to having you in our programs. Tammy, Sarah, hang on.